Exterior, the village square. It is the village of Honitze in South Bohemia in 1869. In the background are farms and cottages with windows. There is a small lake in the background with swimming ducks. <laughs> On the far right, there is a chapel with a door and a tower with a bell. There are trees around it. On the far left is the cottage of the shoemaker, Josef Hapersberg. There is a sign with the inscription, Country, Bohemia, Region, Pisek, District, Mirovice, Municipality, Honice. Below this are two pointing arrows, one with the inscription Road to Pisek, the other has the inscription Road to Ryotitze. In the background stands a wagon. Next to the wagon, Markitka sells wooden dishes, bowls, chests, salt shakers, children's toys, and whistles. Mrs. Dubska and Mrs. Fialova are shopping. It is approaching evening on a summer day. In the background, barefoot children are playing, dressed in simple clothes. In a forge, hammers occasionally bang on anvils. The shoemaker Hapersberg emerges from his shop and wipes the sweat from his forehead. The former soldier Blaha comes to him from the other side. Both smoke pipes. Blessed good evening to Hapersberg. Same to you, Blaha. So, what are you doing, friend? Please, it's the day before the carnival. You know there will be music and dancing, and as a shoemaker I'm always busy with that. Came out to blow up a bit. But, look, Baka, the Bulatsi came from the Masinse with wooden dishes. Hey, it's that pretty Markinka who was here last year from the Congo. It's good to see you, Miss Markinka. Good evening to you, neighbors. Same to you, Miss Markinka. Miss Markinka, <laughs> you are even prettier this year than you were last year. Your cheeks are like raspberries. Hey! Those raspberries aren't for you. Then they are for me, right, Miss Markika? Oh, come on. Not for you either, sir. I see how many appetites are in this village. Well, don't be surprised. My friend here is a widower, and I am an old bachelor. <laughs> I hope, Miss Markika, that you are not angry with us. I also hope not. Well, I wouldn't be much fun if I got angry at every flirtation. I like flirting, but that doesn't make me a naughty woman. <laughs> Here, Miss Matika, where will you be sleeping tonight? My brother is going to sleep with our horse in a stable, and I am going to sleep next to the chapel in our wagon under the top with our guard dog. For heaven's sake, I'm yammering away me here and I need to go and take out the wagon. Excuse me, I got help. <laughs> She's certainly a girl, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> like a gooseberry. <laughs> Listen, dear Blaha, do you think the peasants will keep you in the trouble of the night watch? Well, I wrote out this application to the committee. And as nobody wants it more than I do, I think they will give it to me. But, you know, I'm keeping it a secret, so no one spoils it for me. The 130 gold coins would be good. Our mayor, Mr. Dubsky, will certainly vote for me. I spoke with him, and his wife, Mrs. Dubska, promised me the same. She wants the best for me, because I was a soldier, like her dear departed son, Joseph. And I run errands for the Dubsky sometimes. 
Well, that Mrs. Dukes guy is certainly fond of you, and that's something, my friend. You know, she runs these villas like some sort of queen. She even has the last word with the municipal committee. But what will happen with Pushek? Uh, you know, Pushek doesn't like me. But the Dukes need some. But, like Tukski, will marry Pushek's daughter, Brunka Pushkova. And Tukski will surely persuade Pushek to give me his cloak too. I don't know. I don't know. Pushek likes you like an alien design. Ever since you were telling these stories about these boats on trees from the sea that are powered by steam. I know. Back then, Pushek said I was trying to fool the villagers. That's right. Just like when the potatoes are boiling on the pot. They can also use that steam to drive the ships. That's what he said. Well, yeah, but then you called him an ignoramus in front of everyone. And since then, he's had a grudge against you. And how? But back to the job. You know, the other day I went to the fair in Pisac with Mr. Schubach. And on the way there, I told him I would fly for the night watch job. And he promised to give me his book. That's very good. In the evening, we stopped in the pub for a quick game. Well, you know what Chuba is like. He would gobble the shirt of his back in the dead of winter. He basically forced me to play. Now, I don't gamble, you know that, but I didn't want to say no to him. <laughs> Mr. Erman, the village pub owner, and Mr. Fiala, the village tailor, were also sitting there. Now, I didn't want to gamble, but I won five gold pieces. <laughs> but then the peasants from Malchitsa came and started getting into a betting with Mr. Schubach, and Schubach lost 120 gold coins that he would pay for selling his cows. On the way back home, he said, he'd have to hide this from his wife. He said, my wife mustn't know, so I'll tell her that Bouchek couldn't afford the two horses he wanted to buy, so I went them the 120 gold coins, but Bouchek's wife mustn't know. <laughs> I understand. If Mr. Sun was alive, Mrs. Sumbalova finds out the man was gambling. God help you. She would pull the skin over his head. But what about the other people from the council? Herman was there. What did he say? What about the rest? Well, you know, Herman and all the rest are ignoramuses. Oh, honestly, all our peasants together are ignoramuses. Ignoramuses and furious. They like to talk about the things that they don't know and brag about the things that they don't have. A furious has always to have the first word, has to be the first in the community. And they're always in the right, even when they're wrong. They think they're worthy, but none of them has ever traveled any further than the nearby villas of Radotis and to buy a horse at the fair. That's what I say. Ignoramuses and furious. The only knowledgeable people in our village are the two of us, you and me, because, <laughs> because we live in the world. world. That's it. That's it. <laughs> For example, I was trained in Pisa, then I was retrained in Vienna, and then I went to Graz and Trieste, because I was always eager to see the sea and the boats. You know the ones that are powered by steam? I know. <laughs> and then I worked in Innsbruck. That's down there in Thailand. You know the mountains there? I know. I was there with my regiment. And then I spent two summers in Prague. Oh, I was out in the world. And that's a lot of world for one man to see. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you are such a knowledgeable person. Well, they took me in the peace like regiment. And then I was in Budapest, and then Vienna, and then in Innsbruck. And then in 59, when our Lord Emperor went against the Sardinian king, I was in Natal three times in battle. I have also been out in the world. A lot of the world for one man. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why you're such a knowledgeable person. We're both just frankly knowledgeable. <laughs> and when the two of us start speaking with the local teacher, Mr. Kudorichka, about being out in the world, these peasants are in awe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes even Kudorlitsky himself is known, and he's an educated man. Educated. Educated. And what good is that? There is, you understand, this difference between an educated person and a knowledgeable person. An educated
educated person gets everything from books and maps, but we have been out in the world and seen it all. <laughs> Indeed, you're right. But look, dear Blacha, here comes Vaslav Dubsky and Verun Kabushko. Hey, listen, give me a few. Pretty good money, mate. Eh? That's a lot of money. 
Well, compared to two farms without a penny of debt on the books, then not that much. Well, well, well two farms like that. Listen, just uh, push up. Maybe you could go to 8,000. I can't do that. I swear I can't. You know, I also have a son. I would be basically stealing a thousand gold pieces from him. Well, that's really how I imagined it, 8,000. But I'll tell you what, how about you throw in those two horses that I heard you bought the other day at the fair? <laughs> I can't do that. I mean, surely you agree I shouldn't do that, right? A good father shouldn't do that. <laughs> what are you saying, Ermin? Couldn't you throw in the horses? Could if you wanted to? Well, listen there, I won't give in. The news is here, neither will I. Ducks 
all day long. We're doing, we're doing badly, so badly. We're, we're doing badly, so badly. We we eat like ducks, and we're we're miserable, so miserable. Listen, it is what you have your chorus well trained. As soon as you raise your baton, they start to wail like a pack of wolves. What? <laughs> My children are howling like wolves? Poor babies, crying because bad people want to deprive them of bread. <laughs> Shut up! I can't even hear myself think. Tell you that our children are beggars. Well, child, lock up. The tailor's gonna stop you with a needle. <laughs> Look, let him try. I'll handle him. Well, he won't be afraid of you. Come on, children. Just you wait, you old man. Our father will beat you up. <laughs> but they raise beggars. Down now. So then, Lipsky, will you vote for Tell? I will not. And why is that? The Night Watch is a job for a retired soldier, and Blahar is an honest man. Well, I say he isn't. And I say I'd like to know why. Because he said to me, to my face, that I am an ignoramus. And whoever said that about me is certainly not telling the truth, and therefore cannot be trusted. But you will change your mind, and then you will vote. <laughs> I'm telling you, I will not. Good night, Boucher. Good night. Lightning will strike me down before I go for that blah. I said, I'm not an ignorant. I'm the first counselor. <laughs> Take back what you said about my children, or I'll tell everyone that you stole money from Mr. Shumbal by gambling. Steal my vote with lies. What? You started it when you insulted my wife and children. And now you want to buy me, huh? And tell me, why did you call my children beggars in the first place? <laughs> Back off and leave me alone. My children are decent children <laughs> and dear children. A pleasure in the sight of God. Do you understand? <laughs> Whether they are pleading to God, I don't know. But the whole village knows that they're just pleading to people. <laughs> oh, the whole village knows that today. Okay. And why did you criticize my wife? My wife is a decent woman. And I am a decent man. A trained tailor. A worker. Do you understand? Listen, Sierra, if you don't back off, <laughs> you, you think I'm afraid of you? <laughs> you, you think I don't know why you insult me and my family? Oh, I know all too well. You want to embarrass me in front of the entire village so that they won't make me the night watch. Am I right? <laughs> well, they will make me the night watch rather than you. Because I'm a decent person. And I'm not a good and decent person? Listen, I served on behalf of this village for 12 years. And so, and I will be put off by someone like you. Help! <laughs> Help! He's trying to kill me! Miracles of God! He's trying to kill my husband! Help! <laughs> Everywhere you go, there's trouble. <laughs> As you see, you old man, our father will beat you up. Be quiet, child. You be quiet. Everyone calm down. The committee will decide who gets to be the night watch. 
Now be quiet. Can't you hear the bells have begun ringing prayers? Interior, the village pub. In the back right corner, there is a large green tiled stove. The bar where the beer is tapped is on the left, with shelves on the wall behind it. The shelves are stocked with mugs for beer. On the walls are wooden candlesticks with tallow candles. There is a cross. Here, there is also a horseshoe for luck. Prices are listed on a sign on the wall. On the right and left are benches and chairs. The center of the room is free for dancing. On the left are Mr. Dubsky, Mrs. Dubska, their son, Dr. Dubsky, Petr Dubsky, and the former soldier, Blaha. On the right side are Mr. Boucher, Mrs. Bushkova, and their daughter, Marunka Bushkova and also Mr. Fiala and Mrs. Fialova. Everyone is relaxed. It is evening. <laughs> Emma, the pub owner, serves the guests beer. Markitka enters, wearing a traditional Domaszlice costume. Bless my soul. Look at this. This is a traditional Bohemian costume. See these around here anymore. Oh, bless my gracious me, Miss Markitka, you are a most pretty young lady, blood and milk, and so finely dressed, like looking at a blooming poppy at midday. Come, Miss Markitka, <laughs> drink with me. To your beauty. To your health. <laughs> but, sir, you know how to tease a girl. Oh, it's not teasing, Miss Markitka. It comes from the heart. I may be an old man, but when I see a pretty young lady in a fine bohemian costume, my heart warms in my chest. It feels like this lark is fluttering and singing its spring song. Oh, well, you must have been a pretty cheerful gentleman back in your youth. Oh, I was. I was, Miss Markitka. I was a furiant in the best sense of the word. I talked about things I didn't know, bragged about things I didn't have. A furiant has to be first in the community, always have the last word, and always be right, even when they were wrong. <laughs> Yes, yes, I was a flirian, and, and I knew how to flirt. If I were young now, well, Miss Marquis, I don't know, I don't know, I do like you an awful lot. <laughs> oh, come on, uh, could you please tell me where your son, the mayor, Mr. Rutsky, is? I have something on my mind all morning that I would like to tell him. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, here I am, Miss Marquis, so uh, what can I do for you? Well, sir, last night a very strange thing happened. So, I'm sleeping there in our wagon next to the chapel of St. John, and suddenly, it could have been about an hour after midnight, our watchful guard dog starts barking. Huff! Huff, 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 huff! <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> uh, so, I look from under the top, and I see. Well, let me describe it to you. So, this one here, sir, he's like...
are the two. And you, over here, sir, you are like our wagon. And like I look from under the top, over there, to the chapel. Don't look back, sir, you're the chapel. <laughs> and someone sneaks from over there, from the chapel. Some woman, her head is covered in scarf. And she sticks some paper on the door. Some paper on the door. And I jump out and I scream. My dear sinful woman, what are you doing? This is a holy place. And I shoot her and I gave her a slap. <laughs> she ran away. I tore the paper down. And I took it back to the bank. You see, uh, was there anything written on this paper? Indeed there was. I read it in the morning. I was so frightened by what I read there. But then the virus came and I forgot all about it. But here it is. Decide for yourself. <coughs> if the committee doesn't elect Balaha as the night watch, the members are bad people. <gasps> what? <laughs> this is some villainy. <laughs> but, but wait, there's more. And if the committee doesn't make Blaha the night watch, then a red rooster will cover this village on all four sides. What? A red rooster? A red rooster? Does that mean if we don't give the night watch to Blaha, our village will be burned down? <gasps> well, this was written by none other than Blaha himself. I beg you, don't say that. I'll be forced to stand up for myself. No, no Blaha wouldn't do such a thing. Blaha is not such a bad person. As if you could understand women. Who else would have uh, done it, uh, written it, if it says right here that if we don't let him as the night watch, all village will burn down. On all four sides. I beg you, don't, don't believe him. I, I didn't do it. And I say you did it. If you say that one more time, it will be our last hour. Blah, come back! You threatened me? The, the first counselor? Like that! <laughs> Bruce, don't forget yourself. And I say you did it! You and I say you did do it! Are you calling me an arsonist? I have served this village for 12 years. Christ on a cross! Say it one more time, a blood will flow. Blah, blah. Blood will flow? Who's blood? Drink with me. Well, you 
You won't even drink with me? No. Why wouldn't I want to drink with you? You see, Zipsky, all the people in the village consider you the smartest person. <laughs> That's why they elected like you the mayor. And I don't envy you. Oh, no. Although I'm old. But you see, in the end, I won. I was right. Why is the bad person? And you're sorry. Right? Look, I understand that you're unhappy that it turned out that I was smart. But I, I'm so happy. <laughs> I can do my like, I don't even know what I do happiness. I can just You know what? I know. You said that if I thrown in the horses, Batsap and Veruka could get married. Did you say that or not? Oh, indeed, that's what I said. Well then, here's my hand. I'm having the horses. Wait, so you will have the horses? I will have them. I give you my word. Now, don't you go back on yours. <laughs> you don't know me at all. Whatever the situation is with Blaha, I would never go back on my word. Did you hear what he said? Well, neighbor, here's my hand. God bless. God bless. God bless. But you are wrong, you are. <laughs> so, let's set up now. Blessings to the children. Sorry, Vaslav, can I interrupt? Can I have a word? Of course. Vaslav, do you think the black will be some letter? The lady struck me down, no. Vaslav, you cannot believe how badly he's taking it. It's a wonder he doesn't go crazy. As I was taking him out of the pub, he was tearing his hair out, and he was screaming, I cannot let them believe that of me. I'd rather kill myself. But who do you think wrote that person letter? Oh, you know. Love. I've been out in the world, and that's, what's, that's what makes a person knowledgeable. It seems to me there is something suspicious about this letter. Yeah. It is suspicious, and I suspect someone. But please, this would be a criminal accusation, right? So, I took it upon myself to investigate. But, let's. Forget about all that today. Uh, you have your Veruca and we have the carnival. Let's all drink, dance, and have fun. And have faith that God would not leave, leave an honest man to have harm. Cheers to Miss Veruca! Cheers! Cheers. And cheers to you. But uh, listen, Basla, you could do me a favor. Of course, anything. You know, I heard this song, the one about this Count Fridolin, and uh, I liked it. You know, the one goes, On the borders of the German city. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the one. So, I think the Taylor's daughter, Christina, has it written down. Of course, I cannot ask her myself, but you could borrow it from her and give it to me in secret. Of course. When she shows up, I'll ask her. But, please, that's not, let's not mention that to your father, right? Okay, here she is now. Uh, Christina, hey, Christina. <laughs> uh, drink with me.
fetches me with anyone who will beat me. Poor girl. Uh, drown your sorrows. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, well, 
down for the wind. That's, that's a damn good song for you, my love. And when I start singing it, the whole village will be watching. A thousand times, thank you, young Maxlov, for bringing it to me. You can't say, please tell me, what is this for? Of course. Of course. But now let's see that we're not afraid of them. On the borders of the German Sea, he found the castle. was the wise man, <laughs> so they gone insane. <laughs> Mr. Man, Mr. Buschek, here's the punch. We all punch. Smells nice. Those flowers. Well, Father, as the oldest here, the first toast is yours. Cheers ah, to the bride and groom. Long may they live. Long, Long may they live. Ah, furious. We were all furious. Men, women, boys and girls, furious. But do you think that I am any different? <laughs> Heaven forbid. After all, I come from the same roots. But today, these two children are making me so happy that, despite my 75 years, I will also play the part of a furious. My, my dear children, I will give you something as a token of my affection. These gold coins, they are a precious thing. I have been wearing them around my neck. For 57 years now. 57. Ah, <laughs> uh, where have they gone? Those times when I received them. Oh, it was back in 13. Uh, during the French Wars. During Napoleon. Who went from a simple soldier to the Emperor of France. In those days, every young man had to go to the army. My Dearly departed father, uh, to keep me from the army, he put me in service at the court as a coachman, <laughs> because I knew how to handle horses very well. <laughs> the director of the hunt, Mr. Farushka, made me his personal coachman. One day, uh, a letter arrived from the Lord of the region, asking, uh, that, no, telling us, that uh, our Lord Emperor, who at the time was Rakishen, <laughs> was going with Tsar Alexander of Russia from Vienna to Prague. And the best coachmen were to take them from one estate to the other. The Lord of the region asked Mr. Zruchka, that, that was the director, if he had a reliable coachman who could take those two monarchs from Trotovin to Chinevice. Well, Mr. Zruchka, the director. <laughs> he sent a musketeer for me, and he said, Petr, do you dare? Well, neighbors, to tell you the truth, I was scared. But then, I immediately thought what an honor it would be to one day be able to say that I drove those two famous monarchs. So I said, I humbly tell you, Mr. Verushka, Director of the hunt. <laughs> I honestly dare. And he said, Very well, Petter, you will go to Protovin in a week. From that moment on, the entire village looked at me differently. On the 14th of October, 1813, I went to Protovin to spend the night. The, the two monarchs spent the night in the chateau. The entire town was full of lords, princes, counts, generals, other military leaders, and foreign legionnaires. I mean, everywhere was full of our knights, Russian Cossacks, with their bikes. In the morning, I drove the carriage in front of the chateau. The two monarchs got in, some Russian generals, supposedly a prince, 
sat next to me on the trestle. Two gunmen, fully decorated, sat behind the carriage. I blessed the horses three times. <laughs> three times. <laughs> also blessed myself. Cracked the whip. And away we flew. Folks, it was a spectacle. <laughs> Thousands of people gathered from far and wide. Uh, at the front was a crowd of our knights. Then a row of carriages with gentlemen of the court, generals and legionnaires, and at the back, the Russian Cossacks and pikes. <laughs> and so we went all the way to Pisac. There, the two monarchs were greeted by the lord of the region, the Prakensky region. Oh, at the time, the, Prakhen the Pisek region was still known as the Prakensky region. <laughs> <laughs> and again we flew through Chizwa, through Mirotica. Oh, and my horses flew so that my heart just leapt with joy. When I pulled the carriage in front of the chateau, she stimulated said, the two monarchs got out, and our Lord Frantisek tapped me, 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 <laughs> on the shoulder, and he said to me directly, you can drive well. <laughs> and he gave me two ducats, oh. and then Tsar Alexander, tall, brave, Sing for you 
one old song that I would sing when I was wooing my late wife, my dearly departed Mayoranka. She has been lying behind the white walls of the cemetery in Rome for 15 years now. <laughs> May the grass on her grave grow greener when she hears this song of hers, so that she may know that her old husband loves her still. Music, please. Music. Tomorrow, 
when the municipal committee will decide who gets a nightmarish gun, <laughs> they will be playing my song. <laughs> and that's where you're wrong. They will be playing my song. <laughs> that's just trash talk. <laughs> so, so, just so you know, I have proof. Who wrote the black no no? Proof? Not news. Yeah. Proof. And such proof that from this time tomorrow evening, they will be leading someone in Ireland from our village to Bisa in the regional port. Just so you know. <laughs> and now, Emma. Emma. <laughs> it's my son. And I will now choose. The most beautiful dancer in the whole village. <laughs> I will choose the one I like most from the whole village. <laughs> Perhaps it will be a girl of blood and milk. As beautiful as a pink, like the most beautiful rose that blooms in the royal garden. <laughs> I'll just back, my faithful old friend. I will dance the song with you. Well, I will tell them who it was, only so 
that a good person wouldn't get into trouble because of me. Gosh, is it? Well, it's clear that you are a decent person, Miss Wright. Decent? Decent? Mrs. Dupscott, who is this soldier? <sighs> that is my dear departed soldiers.
Here we have two applications to be the night watch. Blava and the other. So, tell me who you want to choose. Well, as the first councillor of the village, I know that we do not give the night watch to Blava, who threatened to burn down the whole village, but that we give it to Della instead. So, do you neighbours still think that it was Blava who wrote the blackmail letter? And you honestly believe what he said yesterday in the pub? As if you could understand, women. It was just something he said to get out of it. Hey there, neighbor. I'm telling you. Listen, neighbor. You can't talk to us about municipal matters, okay? This specific municipal ordinance stipulates that. <laughs> Municipal authorities, including also the Night Watch, are appointed by the committee. Nowhere here does it say that a woman also gets a say. And you know that's just stupid. Because how many times is one woman smarter than the whole committee? And I'll tell you once more that Blaha didn't write that book me a Mr. Kuluchka, you are a teacher and you know about handwriting. What do you say? Most honored municipal committee. <laughs> Here we have a petition from the former soldier, Blah. I can see it's written in an ancient script that we teachers and educators like to call cursive. <laughs> but, most honored municipal committee, this blackmail note is written in the new script that we teachers are teaching the children, the so-called all caps. <laughs> oh, come on. Blah wouldn't have written it himself that he would burn down the whole village, now would he? He's too smart for that. He got someone else to write it for him. He wasn't in the army for nothing. Exactly. And so you see, Mrs. Luska, you're standing up for him in vain. Anyway, let's talk to him and let's vote. Piala is a decent person. Do you understand? So I vote for Piala. Who else? Me too. I will not vote. And why is that? You in particular must. So that needn't be. But uh, this specific municipal law allows that those who don't want to vote don't have to. Then, by a clear majority, Rantashet Piala, the tailor, is hereby elected. I'll go ahead. What do you think, neighbours? Should we give this blackmail note to the authorities? Well, you know we should, otherwise we wouldn't be to blame if something happened to the village. Good afternoon, Paul. <coughs> huh. Mr. Piala, uh, so we've discussed it and we've decided to make you the night watch. Oh, God bless you, Mr. Mayor, and blessings a hundred thousand times to all my neighbours for remembering a poor man and a father of <laughs> seven children. <laughs> so, if you serve the village faithfully, you'll receive 130 coins a year, plus a bonus from each house for Christmas. So, uh, here I present you with the town coat and the town bugle. <laughs> hmm. I hope I can get this altar to fit me. <laughs> Davis, I have good news for you. What is it? Well, neighbors, as I said yesterday, someone else wrote the blackmail note, and I had proof of it. Speak up. How do you know that? Mr. Kudulishka is a learned person, and he is the best judge of such matters. Do you have the blackmail on him? Here it is. Well, neighbors, now read this. Come on, just show me. On the borders of the German? German! <laughs> German! <laughs> City. City. 
city stands a castle, castle, <laughs> castle on Craggy, Craggy Hill, 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 Hill. <laughs> Are you trying to fool us? This is a song that ladies sing in bed. Mr. Kudolishka, do you see how the handwriting here in this song is the same as the handwriting on the blackmail note? Jesus, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Illustrious committee, that is the same writing, the same so-called all caps, as we teachers and educators call it, as the blackmail notes. So it was written by the same hand, and therefore the same person. <laughs> Upon my soul, it is the same writing. Down to the letter. But who wrote this song? The author of this song has inscribed their name right here on the back. This, <laughs> this song was copied by me, Christina Fialba from Ponitsa. Christina Fialba, the tailor's daughter, probably in misfortune. <laughs>
gentlemen. <coughs> and lady. <laughs> Please forgive me. I promise I won't do it again. But remember, dear neighbours, I have a wife and seven children. Such misery! <laughs>
and I shall let my son marry his daughter and let some rabbit breeds into our family. May lightning strike me down first. And may lightning strike me down before I let my daughter in such a strange family. I won't allow it. <coughs> Friends, what are you doing? What? You gave your word yesterday in front of witnesses. And today you would. I'm telling you that you will not marry that girl. I will not give my daughter to such a person. <laughs> and neither will I. So you won't allow it? Oh, that's great. Well, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I also have a head, and it's at least as hard as yours. <laughs> and I took it into my head that I would marry none other than Bruga. And now you're telling me that I can't? Well, then you know what I'm going to do. <laughs> the Emperor always needs young and healthy soldiers, and I have always loved horses. <laughs> I will go to Pisek. Enjoy the cavalry. That's a child. Please have some sense. Let them kill me there. I won't regret it, but you will. Till the day you die. Vats for our father. If you have died on the battlefield, then let me die there too. That's love. Leave me, grandfather. This bird, <laughs> which I taught to sing the love song of the dear departed Joseph, give it to Veronica. I promised her. And when he sings dear departed Joseph's love song, let her remember me. Let her remember that I loved her to death, and that I'm in a grave, just like dear pardon Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. Can you hear him? Already singing his love song? In the prime. Can you hear him? <laughs> you can't hear him. It doesn't matter. Because Joseph hears it. And that grave of his is now. And he thinks of you that you are not human, that you have hearts of stone. When he sings that song, think that you also killed me in the prime of my youth. Now goodbye, everybody. I'm going to peace and enjoy the cavalry. Lots of love, <laughs> child. Lots of stay where you are. And no, and no, and no. Exterior, the village square. Everything is as it was in the beginning. The town inscription, the shoemaker sign, <laughs> the cottage, the ducks, the wagon from Bumajlice, the trees, and the chapel. The former soldier Blaha and the shoemaker Hoppersberg are back at the shoes. Václav enters carrying a suitcase. He's followed by Mr. Dubsky, Mrs. Dubska, and Mr. Hoppersberg, and Mrs. Hoppersberg. Thank 
kill me in the army, just like they killed Pierre and parted Joseph. <laughs> Pray for me sometimes. That's up. Goodbye, Bruce. Goodbye, everyone. What are you doing, you hardened furious? Well, you like to have more than he loves us, then let him go. Oh, why do you 
say Nightwatch, we outwitted his ignorance and curiosity, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course we did. We're such knowledgeable people. <laughs>